Thank you for joining us for a briefing on Kosovo's February 14th parliamentary elections. I'm Nancy Soderberg, the National Democratic Institute's Senior Country Director for Kosovo. Together with my colleagues and our partner, Democracy in Action, we will provide a brief summary and analysis of these dramatic elections. Over the past two decades of democracy work in Kosovo, NDI has supported Kosovo's parties, parliament, and electoral processes to help ensure a vibrant democracy. Our programs are largely supported by USAID and the National Endowment for Democracy. In February, Kosovo's voters went to the polls for a fifth parliamentary election in the 13 years since independence, and the second such election in the past two years. From these results, the parties will select the Assembly's 120 members, as well as the Prime Minister and President. What we saw in the vote was a clarion call for change. Despite the pandemic, election turnout was high at 47%, with a record number of votes coming from the diaspora. Kosovars voted for an end to corruption, an economic reform agenda, a new generation of leaders, and a demand for progress. Kurti will face immediate challenges in navigating Kosovo's through pandemic and meeting high public expectations to curb corruption and build the economy, issues on which he ran and will be expected to deliver. Also at the forefront is the dialogue with Serbia to normalize bilateral relations. The election results have yet to be finalized and there remain many questions on the makeup of the final government. To help us, help us understand what happened in these elections, let me turn to Valon Kurhasani, National Democratic Institute's Deputy Country Director in Kosovo. Um, I will give an overview of uh, what changed in this election. And um, almost in every instance of our public uh, opinion research we have undertaken in the last five, six years shows that citizens are decidedly angry that their political system is more consumed with self-interest than the public interest, particularly during the global pandemic. Uh, one should say that uh, Kosovo attitudes are decidedly negative about politics and an angry determination is setting in, uh, especially Kosovo Albanians are unhappy with their politicians. While the government should have been managing a pandemic, Politicians engaged in unseating the government of Kurdi and served their own ends, not the public interest. Corruption in the form of nepotistic hiring practices is basically driving frustration toward the weak economy and high unemployment. While corruption in itself might no longer be among, I don't know, three or four top minded issues, unemployment and the economy are. And the vote represents a desire for a fundamental change. Let me give a brief sort of attitude change in patriotism that we have been seeing through our research. Uh, let's say people were looking for honest and principled public service is now key to how they understand patriotism. In the past, political actors who are veterans of 1999 war were forgiven shortcomings because of their patriotic service. But people feel differently about what patriotism means today. So it's about public service and integrity. One should ask what after this election? Well, the political leaders have an opportunity to more effectively address public service hiring practices, uh, tackle unemployment, uh, focus on policies and legislation that are relevant for the citizens. It also has the opportunity to perform better in handling the pandemic in the end of the day. However, perceived self-interest politics and the state of the economy remain the major drivers of public uh, attitudes. What we can expect in the post-election government formation, uh, while Vedvendosi appears, appears poised to reach majority of seats and form a government, delay is likely. Electoral results certification is likely to be challenged in the courts, especially the candidate counting, further delaying the government formation. If the winning party doesn't obtain a majority, the next government will be another coalition, likely also taking time for, to, to form. Another element to be considered is the post of the president, which in all three rounds by our constitution should be elected 
or at least should have a quorum of two thirds of MPs. So that's key to the formation and longevity of the government. It is possible the parliament will elect a president prior to the formation of the government, but most likely is the new assembly will first elect the speaker who will become acting president. And the, the deadline will be until uh, 5th of May. Should the selection of the president be delayed past the 5th of May, then Kosovo will enter into a constitutional crisis and, and most likely will require a constitutional court interpretation. If the election of the president is initiated in a normal procedure and fails to get elected in three rounds, the new elections will occur in, in 60 days. Another challenging topic, and that's my, my, my last part, it's the, the, the topic uh, of the dialogue. Uh, worryingly, rhetoric around the kosovo serb dialogue and the lack of perceived progress is allowing increasingly strident and intractable narratives to take hold. Uh, failed promises of visa liberalization and bureaucratic reforms have hardened attitudes and made compromise unlikely. While the Brussels agreement process has led to assumed progress, there is little clarity about the future or impact to the lives of Kosovars. And in general, Kosovo Albanians are increasingly strident about the conditionality of engagement with Serbia on such issues such, uh, such as the need to locate the, and return the missing, uh, acknowledge their role in the war, pay reparation, and in the end, recognize Kosovo statehood. Uh, thank you very much, Valan. And as we have for many election cycles, NDI supported nonpartisan election observation. This cycle through our partner organization, the Kosovo Democratic Institute, the lead organization of the coalition Democracy in Action. Here to offer some findings is the head of DIA Secretariat, Elgin Sakoli. Thank you very much. Uh, the coalition of local civil society organizations for election, election observation, democracy in action through its impartial observation considered that the early parliamentary elections of February 14th were organized and conducted in line with the democratic and uh, standards for free and fair elections. The general electoral process was conducted within the framework of legal definitions and international standards. The citizens of Kosovo demonstrated the high democratic culture by massively voting despite a, a bad weather and the pandemic situation. By accepting and respecting the civic will immediately after the publication of the results, the competing political entities have contributed to the advancement of the democratic values of the elections and the credibility of uh, the formation of the citizens in them. Preliminary results indicate that the formation of a solid parliamentary majority, which would contribute to a proper functioning of parliamentary and institutional life in Kosovo. However, Democracy in Action has expressed its concerns regarding the votes won by Bosniak and Roma uh, parties, which were unusually concentrated in Serb majority areas, where there is almost no demographic concentration of these communities. Introduced the parallel vote tabulation methodology by randomly and statistically selecting a sample of polling station nationwide. Through engaging about 650 volunteers, which reported online in a web platform created for observation purposes, DIA covered campaign activities, including media monitoring and, and the progress of electoral process during the E-Day. As for the work of the Central Election Commission, we consider that it has been largely transparent and almost all electoral activities and operations were concluded without delays. An exception to this is the out of country voting, which failed to be closed on time due to the very high number of application and the CEC's decisions to verify them. However, the work of the CEC in some cases has been accompanied by clashes between members and the chairwoman, as well as interferences by political actors in the work and in the independence of this institution. The official election campaign was preceded by an intense pre-campaign period, which took place on the ground, but also in the media. 
the election campaign was more dynamic and electrifying than in the previous elections, given the pandemic situation with a significant number of election activities, which were often unannounced to the relevant institutions and with high levels of non-compliance with the anti-COVID-19 measures. At the end, on behalf of the Democracy in Action, I'd like to thank the German Embassy in Kosovo, USID Kosovo, and the Swiss uh, Embassy in Kosovo, who supported our domestic mission of election observation. Thank you, Elgin. Now let's return to Valon for information related to the minority community. Well, thank you, Nancy. As Elgin was uh, mentioning, one evolving development uh, which involves allegations that Serbian list politicians in Kosovo interfered in the election of non-Serbian communities in order to garner uh, allies in the assembly beyond the Serb seats. So 10 seats in the Kosovo assembly are reserved for Serbs and another 10 for the minority communities, such as Ashkali, Bosniaks, Roma, Egyptians, Gorani, and Turks. Uh, minority community leaders and, and nearly 50 NGOs argue that the Bosniak and Roma parties created just a couple of days or weeks before the election received votes from the Serbian community, enab enabling them to garner seats in the parliament, uh, which belong to specific communities. The preliminary CEC results shows a significant increase in turnout of these two communities in the two 2021 elections compared to previous election cycles, as well as the majority of votes coming from Kosovo Serb majority populated municipalities. So the newly formed Bosniak party in the north of Mitrovica, for example, appears to have received more than 80% of its votes from the Serbian municipalities, while the Roma initiative in Gracianica managed to receive more than 60% uh, of their votes from Serbian populated uh, municipalities. So if these actions are proven true, it can seri seriously damage the election process and the intent of constitutional mechanisms of non-majority communities protection. Some of the minority parties have already filed complaints with electoral bodies and will have to be seen the outcome of those potential decisions or, or complaints. Last thing uh, on, on uh, communities, their presence in the media, uh, most of the mu uh, minority communities were not well uh, represented. They were invited to the debates only a few times when there were topics related to the minorities. And there were no media appearance from any candidate from the Serbian community in Kosovo. Although there were some uh, representation in the media based in Belgrade, mainly representing uh, Serbian list. Um, NDI also supports women's political and electoral participation. I'm going to turn next to Nida Bitsuri, our program manager, to offer some thoughts on that aspect. Well, thank you so much, Nancy. Um, yes, these elections brought change to Kosovo, and this change can be attributed to the women and youth voters. Exit polls indicate that the majority of votes for the movement that Dendosia was women and youth. Um, the movement that Dendosia was voted by 61% of women and 61.3% of 18 to 24 year olds. Thus going forward, um, no successful political party will be able to neglect these two important groups. However, once more, uh, women were underrepresented in their candidate list, with the majority of parties meeting the 30% quota, while some slightly did surpass it. Um, this failure to significantly exceed the legal quota on candidate list indicates the presence of gender bias in the party's candidate selection process. The situation persisted despite the concrete CSO campaign to push parties to file for 50% representation of women and thus match the law on gender equality. There was also a poor articulation in party platforms and little action on the situation of women and girls in Kosovo. Uh, parties continue to focus on superficial issues and not on plans and actions of prevention. 
However, progress has been made in the role that women in party leadership and initiatives with Yosa Osmani, Duda Balye, Emilia Rejepin, Adriana Hojic, all taking leadership position throughout these elections. While some progress has been made in uh, giving a greater voice to women, um, no progress was seen uh, made uh, in regards to people with special needs, as well as the LGBTQ community. As has been the case for the last 13 years, the infrastructure to enable people with special needs to vote continues to be lacking. According to domestic observation missions, half of the full, uh, centers did not have the infrastructure to allow this kind of access. Although the addressing of the rights of people with disabilities lacked in the political platforms, we did, however, see some individual candidates addressing this matter. The same cannot be said for um, the LGBTQ community as their rights are absent, absent in the political party platforms and the uh, public representation uh, of the uh, candidates. None of the TV debates discuss political party programs regarding the LGBTQ community. A reflection, this again, a reflection of our institutional neglect toward this community. Thus, overall, uh, political parties once more in these elections have shown that they're not ready to combat the patriarchal social norms and the systematic gender discrimination in our country. In comparison to the pre previous elections, however, uh, this year we have seen a slight improvement in the area of women candidates being represented in the media. Um, while only on very limited occasions, women candidates in TV debate took part in discussions beyond what we'll call the stereotypical women's issues. Instead, they discussed economic policy, rule of law policy, education policy, and other substantive issues. However, um, the representation of both women as candidates, as well as analysts in TV debates, in particularly during the primetime show, shows, has remained very low at around 20%. So a lot of work to be done in this regard. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Nita. Let me finally turn to Paikam Gashi, uh, NDI's Senior Program Manager, to discuss the phenomenon of media-based disinformation and how it's affecting Kosovo's election process. Thank you, Nancy. NDI observed the online media and social media environment around the elections. We saw that all political parties were attacked with disinformation activity during the election period, especially candidate for prime minister and president and the head of Central Election Commission. The information disorders included doctored pictures and videos false media articles, and misleading headlines and content. There appears to have been also a very limited fact-checking by journalists. A new trend in these elections were also memes created and spread on Instagram involving doctor pictures and videos aiming to push forward different narratives and attacking some of the political leaders and candidates. In the Serbian language sample, for example, most of the memes were created in social media and shared mainly on Facebook and Twitter. Candidates for high office were the targets of disinformation campaigns, and women were subject to sexist attacks. We observed disinformation uh, by the Russian-controlled Sputnik and the Serbian media against the past and political goals of LDV's candidate for prime minister, Albin Kurti, as well as in the Albanian media against another candidate for prime minister, uh, PDK's uh, Enver Hoxha. LEV's candidate uh, for president and current acting president, Vyosa Osmani, was also subject to disinformation uh, about her family's ties to Serbia and her expensive home, as well as biased and sexist language. In addition, the chairwoman of the CC, Valdeta Daka, was attacked as biased and corrupt over the CC decision to not certify some candidates in accordance with the Constitutional Court's verdict bearing candidates with a recent criminal conviction. While both men and women candidates and leaders were verbally attacked for their political positions, women were also harshly criticized for their personal life choices and their appearances. Serbian narratives showed also how mainstream online media in Serbia was very active in creating and spreading false narratives on social media. Many were very biased in favor of supporting the Serbian list and described different challenging uh, scenarios that would unfold if they didn't win at least the 10 seats reserved for the Serb community in the Assembly of Kosovo. 
Well, thank you, Paikum. And I want to thank Valon, Elgin, Paikum, and Nita for your analysis and insights into Kosovo's uh, complex and evolving political landscape. February's elections were a resounding call for bolder reform. The dramatic political movement offers a challenge to the next government to seize this opportunity for fundamental political and economic reform. The people of Kosovo just voted for a better life and it will hold its leaders accountable. We at NDI look forward to continuing to work to build a stronger and more inclusive democracy together. We will continue to follow events closely as the CEC certifies results and the government is formed. I want to take this opportunity to thank again our donors, USAID and the National Endowment for Democracy for supporting our activities. Thank you for joining this discussion and continue it with us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you. <laughs>